Cao Rui's reign was a paradoxical one in many ways. He was clearly intelligent and capable, but never fulfilled his true potential as an emperor. He showed great compassion at times, and yet was also capable of great cruelty. His status as heir apparent was never seriously challenged, even though theories exist that he was not Cao Pi's legitimate son. Eight months after Yuan Shi was defeated, and Cao Pi forced Lady Zhen to marry him, she gave birth to Cao Rui. This leads people to believe he was actually Yuan Shi's son. Later on, when Cao Pi moved to Luoyang, he did not allow Lady Zhen to accompany him, and forced her to commit suicide. On top of what happened with Lady Zhen and Cao Rui's unclear origin, he was also not made a crown prince until late in his father's reign in the year 222. He continued practicing the severe prohibitions which his father had put in place, which prevented princes such as Tao Zhi from holding office. This may have been an eventual factor in the downfall of Cao Wei, as great talents were not able to achieve status. Sima Shi did not occupy a position until he was 30 years old, so it's most likely he was among the young intellectuals who were banned by Cao Rui. Sima Yi was elevated to a county Marquis before responding to Sun Quan's invasion against Jiang Xia commandery. He led his forces to successfully repel Zhu Gejin, Zhang Ba, and their 1,000 Wu soldiers, which resulted in Zhang Ba's death. Sima Yi was then promoted to the honoured title of General of Ajao Cavalry. Beneath the Emperor served the Grand General. Beneath the Grand General served the General of Ajao Cavalry, which was usually an honorific title which did not come with an actual field command. It ranked above the Three Excellencies, and was only second to the Emperor. It's unknown, however, if it inherited a field command unit under Cao Rui, but either way, it was still a revered title to receive. In July of 227, Sima Yi was ordered to garrison at Wan, and given command over all military affairs in Jing and Yu provinces. Within a matter of months, Sima Yi began cracking down on the treacherous officials in the area. His earlier prediction was proved correct when he learned about Meng Da's planned defection back to Shu. According to the Wei Lui, Sima Yi actually instigated this by sending his advisor Liang Ji to investigate Meng Da and inviting him to the capital to attend court. This alarmed Meng Da, which urged him to rebel. The Book of Jin has a different opinion, claiming that Sima Yi wrote a flattering letter to Meng Da to distract him, whilst he made preparations to suppress the rebellion. Meng Da is not a trustworthy person. Now that he is hesitating due to suspicions, we should seize this opportunity to get rid of him. Sima Yi hastened his marching speed, so they arrived at Shangyong within eight days. The pathways for Meng Da's reinforcements from Shu and Wu were intercepted and blocked off. Surrounded on three sides, he constructed wooden barriers for extra defence, but Sima Yi led his forces across the river, destroyed the barriers, and arrived just outside the city. They sorted out, and attacked from eight different directions for over two weeks. On the 16th day, Meng Da's nephew Deng Xian and subordinate Li Fu opened the city gates and surrendered. This resulted in Meng Da being captured and executed, and his head was sent to the capital Luoyang. Sima Yi triumphantly made his way back to Wan with 10,000 captives. During his time governing Northern Jing, Sima Yi promoted agriculture and reduced the wasteful spending of the public allocated funds. The people of the Southlands were happy and soon showed their support for him. A former subordinate of Meng Da's called Shen Yi remained in Wei Xing commandery, where he became deeply entrenched, firmly holding on to a very defensible position. He had been illegally using the emperor's name to carve official stamps and seals, and then giving them to others. After he heard about Meng Da's defeat, he saw that many other officials went to present gifts to and congratulate Sima Yi, so he became deeply worried. He soon received his own letter of invitation from Sima Yi, so he went along despite the risks, but was confronted when he got there. He was put under house arrest, then sent back to the capital, before Sima Yi relocated to Yu province with more than 7,000 households from Shangyong. Two Shu military officers who were only primarily referenced in the Book of Jin also came along with their 7,000 men to surrender to Sima Yi. Out of the thousands of people who migrated from Shu to Wei, many needed to be registered as official citizens. Sima Yi told Tao Rui, The enemy seized these people through deception and now abandoned them. It's advisable to have them registered. This way will allow them to be at ease, and they will feel happier. He also advised that out of Shu and Wu, that Wu should be conquered first. The people of Wu know that we are not adept in naval warfare, hence they dare to live in Heifei. When we attack an enemy, we should always block its throat and strike its heart. Xieku and Heifei are the enemy's heart and throat. If we can move our land forces to Wan County, to lure Sun Chuan to advance east, we can capture Xieku's low defences even with a naval force. 
It will be like an army from heaven descending onto the enemy, and they will be defeated. Tarui agreed with this point of view before ordering Simai Yi to return to Wan. There is also a brief mention of Simai Yi the following year, where he led Wei forces into Jiangling during the Battle of Shi Ting. Since 228, Shu forces had been launching invasions against Wei's western borders. In 230, Sima Yi was assigned as a general in chief and then given a ceremonial yellow axe. He was put in charge of defending the border from Shu along with Cao Zhen, who urged for a campaign against their enemy. They staged a large invasion where Cao Zhen led an army from Chang'an, while Sima Yi led a fleet up the Han River from Jing province. They planned to rendezvous in a county within Hanzhong, but the campaign had to be aborted because the gallery roads leading into Shu were too heavily damaged from the constant rainfall which lasted for over a month. Although the campaign was a failure, Tao Zhen's timely retreat allowed the Wei forces to limit their losses. He fell sick on the journey back however and became bedridden. His own son, Tao Shuang, would be the leading commander of a similar expedition in 244, resulting in the Battle of Xing Shi. Fa Zheng once proposed to use Han Zhong to attack Wei's heartland, or to ingest the far west hook of Wei's Liang province. Since then, Zhu Ge Liang used this plan as a blueprint for his own campaigns. In 231, he launched his fourth northern campaign, leading to the Battle of Mount Qi. It was the most vigorous of the five invasions of Wei, resulting in thousands of deaths on both sides. Although Zhu Ge Liang made great achievements in the beginning of the battle, it eventually concluded with a strategic victory for Wei due to the insufficient food supply for the invaders. Zhu Ge Liang sent emissaries to incite the Xi'an Bei and Xiang peoples to create disturbances for Wei, implemented his mechanical supply transport device, the Wooden Ox, and set out to conquer Long Yu, marking Mount Qi as his immediate target. Many records of this campaign prove unreliable, as Zi Zhuo Si was an unapologetic supporter of Liu Bei, who even referred to the Shu state as the Han Dynasty. On top of that, the Book of Jin spoke favourably about Sima Yi, so much of this information must be regarded with scepticism. The Wei forces were prepared for an attack as Jia Si and Wei Ping were already stationed at the mountain, which formed the initial line of defence for Tian Shui commandery. Dai Ling and Fei Yao were stationed with their crack troops in the commandery's heartland. The initial major clash at Mount Qi made the sickly Tao Zhen think it was a diversion to mask a major attack against Chang'an, so he retreated back into the city, but passed away in the following months. At Mount Qi, Zhu Ge Liang met with the Xi'an Bei leader, Qi Bineng, who went to Bei Di Commandery and rallied the locals to support Xu. When Sima Yi came to replace Tao Zhen as the overall commander, he acquired authority over Zhang He, Fei Yao, Dai Ling and Guo Hua, who now served at his command. The crack troops were ordered into defensive positions, while Sima Yi led his forces to relieve Mount Qi. Zhang He wanted to lead a separate unit, but Sima Yi reasoned. If the divided vanguard is able to face the enemy alone, then your words are right. But if they are not able to do so, the dividing of our forces into vanguard and rearguard would be unwise. When Sima Yi arrived at Yumi County, he allowed Fei Yao and Dai Ling with their 4,000 men to guard Shangui County, whilst he led the others to assist Jiasu and Wei Ping at Mount Qi. As the incoming Wei forces approached, Zhu Ge Liang split his army into two. One group remained at Mount Qi, whilst the other went to attack Shangui County. Guo Huai, Fei Yao and Dai Ling were defeated in battle, then Zhu Ge Liang led his men to gather the nearby harvest. Sima Yi encountered Zhu Ge Liang at Han Yang, but they did not engage in battle. A crack unit witnessed their enemy collecting the grain, so they disobeyed Sima Yi by going to attack, but they were quickly defeated. The Book of Jin makes no mention of this unit's defeat. The battle over the resources continued, as Zhu Ge Liang harvested the early spring wheat from the Wei territory. This made the troops panic, because Tao Rui had earlier rejected a proposal to move the food away from the front line, and now it fell into enemy hands. He had intended to leave it for the Wei forces to harvest, but Zhu Ge Liang's movements turned out quicker than anticipated. The Wei army was able to get a steady flow of food supplies, however, from the local nomadic tribes thanks to Guo Hua, who had already won their hearts. As the two armies were about to clash in the mountains, Sima Yi drew his troops into formation then waited, finding protection in the narrow passes in between the ridges. Zhu Ge Liang made use of the terrain by ordering his troops into defensive positions. Ni Yu Jin and his light cavalry engaged in battle with the Shu vanguard Ma Dai, where it's recorded the latter suffered more losses. After this initial clash, 
Zhu Geliang moved his forces to the eastern side of the mountain, where he fortified Lu Cheng. They took control of the hills in the north and the south, whilst using the river as a natural barrier. They pitched covering camps overlooking the riverbanks, so they now held complete control over the waterways, but their provisions were waning, so they would soon be forced to retreat. Zhang He suggested to return back towards Mount Qi, to reorganise their forces, then to launch irregular attacks on the enemy. Sima Yi did not heed this advice and continued his pursuit, but became hesitant when he saw the enemy's formation along the mountain range. After he saw the layout of the Shu camps in the hills, he was criticised and mocked by his subordinates, but he eventually relented. Zhang He was sent forward to attack the southern camp, which was being defended by Wang Ping. Whilst he led the bulk of the Wei army through the central avenue in a frontal assault on Lu Cheng, Wei Yan, Wu Ban and Gao Xiang led a fierce attack to resist the Wei forces. 3,000 soldiers, 5,000 suits of armour, and 3,100 sets of hornbeam crossbows were lost to the enemy Shu force. Sima Yi then retreated his still fairly large army back to their camps. Zhu Geliong was unable to follow up with the counter-offensive, because his soldiers still lacked the necessary supplies, so he decided to retreat his army instead. The bad weather prevented Xu's logistics from delivering material on schedule. Li Yan, who was responsible for the transportation of food, falsely claimed that Liu Shan had ordered for the Shu forces to retreat. The Book of Jin says that Sima Yi pursued the retreating army at this time, captured all the enemy covering camps, and inflicted 10,000 casualties on the enemy. Separate accounts describe Wei's pursuit not going so smoothly, as it resulted in Zhang He's death after a stray arrow hit him in either the right knee or thigh. According to the Wei Lui, Zhang He initially denied Sima Yi's command to pursue the retreating enemy. It went against military doctrine, but he was forced to carry out his order anyway, whereafter he fell into an ambush and was killed at Mu Men Trail. Following Zhu Geliong's retreat, it was suggested by Du Shi and Shui Ti to transport the remaining wheat to Long Yu by the coming winter, before Zhu Geliong returns to seize it. Sima explained, Zhu Geliong feels frustrated by the shortage of grain, so he will definitely stockpile supplies for when he returns. Based on my prediction, he won't attack again if he doesn't have at least three harvests worth of food. He then mobilised farmers from Ji province to Shangui County, and put them under jurisdiction of Jing Zhao, Tian Shui, and Nanan commanderies. By 233, Sima Yi's agricultural plan had come to fruition, and the farmers' hard work became a great source of food for the three commanderies. Meanwhile, the Shu regent Zhu Geliang spent three years recuperating, before he could launch his fifth and final invasion of Wei. In his later years, Sima Yi favoured his concubine Lady Bai. He neglected Zhang Chunhua, but she still came to visit him when he was ill. He said to her, Old creature, your looks are disgusting, why do you even bother to visit me? She became so upset and angry that she attempted to starve herself, and then their sons did too. Sima Yi was so shocked that he instantly apologised to his wife and then reconciled with her. But he later secretly told someone, It doesn't matter if that old creature dies, I was actually just worried about my boys. A dead Zhuge drives away a living Zhong Da. In preparation for his final invasion, Zhuge Liang focused on agricultural projects, whilst he dispatched men to make repairs to the bridges along the Shi Gu Valley. He also made use of his floating horses, which were capable of carrying grain along the Bao River. In the year 234, 60 to 100,000 Shu troops marched through the Xi Valley, making it the largest invasion force since the first campaign. They began setting up camps south of the Wei River, which ran along the southern part of the Wuzhang Plains. Many civilians gathered around Zhu Ge Liang, who constantly worried about a shortage of food. He implemented the Tunshan policy to create new farms along the southern banks. As the Shu soldiers camped amongst the civilians in the area, they were forbidden by Zhu Ge Liang from taking the local people's crops. The Wei government observed that it would be better to adopt a defensive measure for this conflict, as Zhu Geliang was far from Hanzhong, so it would have no interest in a prolonged war. Many Wei officers suggested to camp on the northern side of the river in Mei County, whilst using the water as protection, but Sima Yi pointed out there's a great deal of harvest to the south. He didn't want a repeat of last time, so he led them to the hotly contested area across the river. He led 10,000 cavalry to attack the Shu advance team being led by Meng Yan, who had already crossed over to the northern side. The Shu troops had earlier prepared bridges at a bamboo, 
so Zhu Geliong's soldiers could fire their crossbows at the cavalry whilst remaining out of harm's way. Sima Yi retreated once he saw the completed bridges. He was eventually able to lead his army across the river, but they began building fortifications with their backs facing the water. These defences prevented Zhu Geliong from simply advancing on Chang'an. The massive army exited the Xiegu Valley to find their advance blocked. He said, if Zhu Geliong is brave, he will head eastward in the direction of the mountains. If he moves to the west to the Wuzhang Plains, we will have no worries. Once Sima Yi stationed his army on the southern side of the river, Charui became worried about his position. He sent his deeply trusted but not overly capable general Xin Lang to lead 20,000 soldiers as reinforcements. This army had recently driven out the united Xianbei leaders Bu Dugen and Qi Binang out of Bing province and far into the deserts in the north. Guo Huai foresaw that Zhu Geliong would try to capture the Wuzhang Plains and set up his camp in the northern mountains. He wanted the Wei army to march to the area's defence, because if the plains were lost, then the northern mountain pass would be blocked off by the Shu military. The great fear and confusion this would cause for the people of Liang province would isolate the region to the northwest, then Zhu Geliong could incite the non Han tribes to rebel. Upon hearing this, Sima Yi agreed with his insight, so gave him the mission to occupy the Wuzhang Plains for himself. Guo Huai quickly drove back some Shu forces before setting up a Wei camp. He then moved his forces to Bei Yuan, at the north bank of the river opposite the Wuzhang Plains, and built a temporary wall there. Xu Geliong did indeed attempt to move north, but was blocked by Guo Huai. Around the same time, Xiu Deng was also sent by Sima Yi to defend Yang Sui. This area north of the river became tightly defended by Wei, which prevented Zhu Geliong from crossing over. As he marched west along the plains, looking for a place to cross, he was always blocked by the Wei army. They tried to lure the Shu army into the river in order to cross, but Zhu Geliong did not move for several days. Sima Yi said, Zhu Geliong wants to take control of the Wuzhang plains, but won't advance towards Yang Sui. His intention is obvious. Hu Zun and Guo Huai were then ordered by Sima Yi to reinforce Yang Sui, so they also garrisoned in the area. The bulked out Wei forces were almost deceived when they heard of an incoming attack to the west, but Guo Huai saw through the ruse, so kept his men where they were. He knew that Zhu Geliong's actual target was to capture Yang Sui, so that he could use that position to isolate Sima Yi's forces. Guo Huai prepared the appropriate defences, which paid off when the Shu forces attacked one night. Zhu Geliong, unable to capture the position, was forced to pull back his army. After months of manoeuvring, and having been checked thrice, Zhu Geliong was forced to retreat south across the Wei River. He marched his army to the Wuzhang Plains, possibly out of fear that his communication line may be cut. At the time, the Wei court thought the best strategy was to simply not engage the enemy and wait for them to exhaust their supplies. Zhu Geliong used unoccupied land for farms, making it bountiful. He even invited the local people to assist him. The impartiality of the Shu forces towards the Wei citizens earned great popularity among them. And so, the standoff between the two forces at Wuzhang would last a hundred days. Many times did Zhu Geliong try to bait Sima Yi, but all he would do is fortify his position. Sima Yi was ordered by Cao Rui to hold his position and refrain from launching any attacks, then Xin Pi soon arrived carrying the Imperial Scepter to make sure that Sima Yi followed this order. Zhu Geliong's challenges went unanswered. On one occasion, he sent women's clothing and ornaments across to him to try to get him to attack. Sima Yi was apparently so enraged that he wrote to the Emperor asking to attack but was denied. Sao Rui and Zhu Geliong both knew that he was actually only pretending to be upset as field generals could use their own initiative and did not need to ask for permission. This was merely a trick to calm the Wei soldiers by showing them that he wouldn't put up with the enemy taunting him, thus ensuring that they were always ready for battle. They continued to provoke one another. On another occasion, Sima Yi gathered 2,000 people to cheer by the southeast corner of his compound, knowing it would lure in a spy who would want to find out what's going on. When a messenger later arrived at the Shu camp, he announced that Wu was about to surrender to Wei. Xu Giliong responded, Eastern Wu will not surrender. Sima Yi is an old man who will soon be 60 years old. Does he really need to use such a trick? Third brother Sima Fu wrote to ask how the situation is going. Xu Giliong has big ambitions, but he fails to recognize opportunities. He is full of wits, but not decisive. He likes leading the troops into battle, even though he doesn't have much authority over them. Even though he has 100,000 troops under his command, he has already fallen into my trap, so I'll certainly defeat him. An envoy arrived from Xu, who came to ask to do battle. Sima Yi inquired about Zhu Geliong's eating and sleeping habits. 
how he delivered punishments and oversaw proceedings. When he learned about how little rice he was allocated each day, he said, Zhu Ge Kong Ming takes little food and does much work. How can he last long? Different accounts claim that within days either a meteor or a shooting star fell towards the Shu camp. A glowing red meteorite fell from the sky, along the northeast to the northwest towards Liang's camp, bounced off the ground and landed again three times, expanding in size when it bounced off and shrinking in size as it landed. Sima Yi witnessed this sign that Zhu Ge Liang would either already be dead or easily defeated. According to the Book of Jin, he ordered a surprise raid onto the enemy base from behind. 500 Shu soldiers were killed, 600 surrendered, and the Wei forces captured a thousand live animals. After over a hundred days with no decisive battle being fought, Yang Yi tried to suppress the news of Zhu Ge Liang's passing, whilst quietly organising withdrawal from the plains. His actions came to the attention of Sima Yi, who immediately went on the attack. The locals of Qian had started saying, a dead Zhu Ge Liang scares away a living Zhang Da. When Sima Yi heard this, he laughed and said, I can predict the thoughts of the living, but I can't predict the thoughts of the dead. Xin Pi felt that they could not yet be certain about Zhu Ge Liang's death, so he advised that they remain where they were, but Sima Yi said, The most important things in an army are its documents, troops, horses, and supplies. Zhu Ge has abandoned all of them. How can a person lose five of his most important organs and still be alive? We should quickly pursue the enemy. The area was covered with an annual plant with long sharp spines which could easily penetrate surfaces. Sima Yi ordered some 2,000 men wearing clogs to flatten out a path through the plants so his main army could advance. He led his troops to pursue the enemy and even caught up with them. In response, Xiang Wei and Yang Yi ordered that the banners be raised and the drums beat as if intending to meet Sima Yi in battle. When the Shu forces got into battle formation, Sima Yi suspected there was a trap, so he withdrew his army. After the Shu army had retreated, Sima Yi was surveying their abandoned camp, where he deduced that Zhu Ge Liang was indeed dead. He reissued the order to pursue the enemy, but by now the Shu forces had travelled too far. He uttered to himself, he was a genius. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.